Hey guys, thanks for joining us here at The Bold Life. I have Justin from That Christian Vlogger on with me. We're going to do a short video interview. Uh, so Justin, start out. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? What's your Christian story look like? Yeah, hey guys. Uh, my name is Justin Koo, and uh, I live in the Northwest, Portland, Oregon area with my wonderful wife, Emily, who we've been married now for uh, just a little over two years. And uh, right now, I make YouTube videos about uh, the Christian faith and I talk about how to discover your calling and how to live a life of purpose. Yeah, that's awesome. Justin has an uh, incredible channel. been watching it for a long time. Um, would you mind sharing a little bit about your, your testimony, how you became a Christian or what influenced you most? Yeah, for sure. So one of the easiest ways that I try to like summarize my story is I say that God tricked me. <laughs> I was I was not really looking for for God necessarily or a spiritual experience. I was in high school in my senior year of of, uh, of high school, and I was really going through this period of life where I was searching for meaning, searching for purpose, searching for just kind of that emptiness and that void that I had felt in my in my heart for a while. Um, and at that time, I was just kind of hanging out with some friends. And uh, they were just talking about something that they were doing on on the recent Friday night outing that they had done. And I wasn't quite sure exactly what they were talking about uh, for a while. But then my friends were telling when they were driving on the way back home. This is going to sound crude. I'm sorry. But this is a little insight into the psyche of, uh, you know, a 17 year old male oh, yeah. or at least me. <laughs> but they were on the way back. And one of the guys in the car, there was like four or five people in the car. He farted, and the fart was so rank <laughs> that the driver had to pull over on the left-hand side of the freeway, open the door, and throw up. <laughs> and I was just like, I remember hearing this story in study hall, just laughing my butt off, and just like, just these guys are crazy. Just it was just seemed like a fun time. I was like, all right, dude, I'm down. Let's go. What are we doing? And it turns out that they were going to a Bible study. Uh, about an hour away of all things. And so I started going to Bible studies with my friends, largely because I just thought it would be fun to hang out with them. I didn't necessarily care about the Bible study, but, you know, hey, if we went and got dinner afterwards or if we hung out afterwards, it, I thought it would be a good time. Oddly enough, it was my uh, my friends that on Friday nights we would play poker every <laughs> night, and slowly that group kind of became a, a, a Bible study group. <laughs> nice. Man, that's awesome. That sounds a lot like my story. Wasn't looking for God at all. My wife kind of drugged me to church when I was 21. And oh. uh, I, I got saved after becoming a youth leader. So that was fun. Yeah. Well, there you go. So God kind of tricked me too. All right, cool. So who would you say, if anyone, has influenced your faith the most? Who, if anyone? I mean, there's a, there's a number of people, but immediately that stands out. Uh, one of my, my best friends, his name's Gilbert, or JR is what we call him. He's actually the guy that was uh, kind of led the charge in bringing a bunch of my high school friends to that Bible study group. Uh, and we've been, we've been good friends. It was like one of my groomsmen's at my wedding. But he's just been a friend, someone that I think probably – I mean, maybe to at the most that I've ever met as far as a friend that wasn't family or I wasn't married to who just accepted me for who I was, who understood me, uh, you know, accepted me for my faults and, and, and just just encouraged me along in my Christian journey. So I would say JR is probably one of them. And then uh, another person uh, outside of that would be one of my mentors or maybe, uh, you know, my my father or something along those lines. Oh, very cool. So so you'd say like throughout your early walk, you had a lot of people really pouring into you. Um, I would, I would say so. Um, yeah, definitely. I had a, I had a fairly supportive network behind me and I'm very grateful for that for sure. Oh, awesome. Okay. All right. Um, so a question I didn't actually send you, but what, so how did you start, how did your minute, like your YouTube ministry start? So I think that's, that's yeah. fascinating. Uh, as far as the YouTube part of things. So, um, or when I was ministry in general, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, so, on that. I mean, cause that's a different story. That's like 10 years later. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, so uh, the ministry thing happened right after high school. Uh, same people group, same story, same experience, same time of my life, right? Um, I was at our winter formal, which is kind of like prom for my Christian academy, but we weren't allowed to call it prom or have prom because it was so worldly or whatever, <laughs> some stupid yeah, reason. Yeah. So we had a winter formal, right? Okay. We were on some fancy boat dressed in you know tuxedos and nice dresses and all that kind of stuff. And I heard a friend group kind of off in the distance. 
they were talking about their plans for the summer. And they were saying things like, oh, it's going to be so much fun. Oh, I can't wait. It's going to be a blast. Apparently, a group, uh, two of my friends had done whatever the thing that they were talking about the summer before. And this group of eight or nine or ten people were all like, yeah, let's do it this summer. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be a blast. So, of course, naturally, I jump in without even asking a question. I'm like, yeah, let's do it. I'm down. It's going to be awesome. Turns out that they were talking about doing a summer like youth ministry like type of a thing where they would be going for 10 weeks door to door to door, knocking on doors, praying with people, selling Christian literature, kind of like what Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses do type of a thing. Right, okay. uh, and that's what they were going to do. And the idea is that you live at a church for 10 weeks, you sleep on the floors, and it's like kind of like a, 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 um, a mission trip based in the U.S. kind of a thing. Okay. And so – I didn't really know what I was getting myself into. I'm like, yeah, let's do it. I figured, hey, if I get to live with my friends for 10 weeks and we're hanging out, like it's just going to be a fun time. You know, sure, I'll have to suffer through the the, the sucky knocking on doors ministry kind of thing, but it'll be fun. Right. So the day after I graduated high school, I show up at the program at the church and none of my friends are there. None of the people in that group were there. And so that's why I say like, like, I got tricked into this thing, man. I got yeah. tricked into ministry, tricked into <laughs> to kind of becoming a follower of Jesus. But yeah, you know what? While I, was, while I was in that summer program, I was, you know, I, got, I came face to face with the answers to a lot of the questions that I was searching for. What am I going to do with my life? Why am I here? How do I make a difference? Uh, and, and what can I really pour myself into? And so I'm e- eternally grateful for God tricking me. I think he knew I'm so hard headed that he wouldn't be able to just kind of like convince me through reason, right. but it's like, Hey, you just got to experience it. And I, and I got that, you know, the, the, the scriptures talk about taste and see that the Lord is good. Right. Yeah. That's what that summer was for me. And, uh, you know, I haven't looked back. That was, uh, 10 years, almost 11. Oh, going on 11 years ago. Wow. Dude, that is, that is awesome. That's yeah, man. My, my story into ministry is not quite like that. Like I said, I wasn't saved whenever, uh, whenever I became a youth leader and we just showed up our church, we stayed for a volunteer meeting thinking we'd hand out coffee or something. And my wife's old youth pastor came and was like, Hey, do you want to help with the teenagers? And I'm like, no, but they made me do it anyway. And <laughs> I, I fell in love with the ministry. <laughs> um, and I, That's I got, awesome. Yeah. I got saved at a youth pastor conference later on. So that was, it was cool. It was really cool. Okay, so I know uh, you put out like a ton of videos, a ton of content. So I imagine that comes from a ton of like time with God. Uh, can you talk a little bit about what your daily time with God looks like or what your uh, method is? Sure. My daily time with God varies from day to day to day. I would say the thing that that is the most uh, consistent mm-hmm. is I spend a lot of time in audio content, whether that's a podcast, an audio book. Uh, maybe a YouTube video that I'm listening to as I'm going about my day or something like that. So I try to build that into my, my daily routine. When I, when I go to the gym and like, say if I go to for a morning gym session, I'm listening to a sermon as I'm doing my, my, my sets or whatever the case is. Or if I have to go run some errands, I'm driving around town, I'm listening to a podcast or something along those lines. And so for me, that is a way that I can, um, gain more knowledge. I can learn more things. That's really helpful. Uh, but certainly when I first started off, I went to a Bible college, uh, that was rather, uh, intense. Uh, it was only two years, but it felt like they were trying to cram four years into two years. I mean, I spent, I don't know, during those two years, probably at least eight hours a day studying the Bible. Like our textbooks were literally the Bible. Yeah. That's awesome. So, so that was, I mean, so I haven't spent nearly as much time like physically reading the Bible as a book as I did back then. Now it's taking place in different forms. Um, but, you know, certainly that really helped having that type of a, a education experience. Nice. Okay. I, I do the same thing. I love podcasts and audiobooks. Audible is my favorite subscription in the world. Um, yeah. <laughs> that free book a month is awesome. Um, yeah. Okay. So kind of spinning off that question, what would you say is the the one thing, whether it be a podcast or book or ministry or person that or we'll stick with like books and podcasts and stuff that has influenced you the most or helped build your, your faith the most? I know it's a tough question. Um, <laughs> outside of the Bible? I'm oh, sorry? Outside of the Bible? Yeah, outside of the Bible. Sorry, outside of the Bible. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So one of the writers that I hold in really high esteem is this woman by the name of Ellen G. White. She was one of the founders of the church that I'm a member of. Okay. Uh, I'm a Seventh-day Adventist Christian. 
Uh, and Ellen White is one of the founders. Uh, uh, and she has written, I don't know, over 50 books, 100 books, something something ridiculous. Right. Uh, and she has a lot of different really great pieces of literature that I've enjoyed. But the, the one that in, in particular I loved the most that I would recommend for viewers mm -hmm. uh, to check out is this book called The Desire of Ages, which is uh, basically this tomb on the life of Jesus going through the Gospels, you know, kind of story by story and just breaking it down. And I thought it was just really awesome the way that um, – brought the story of Jesus to life in ways that I wouldn't have really noticed kind of on my own. So I'll, I'll give you an example of one one nugget that I love from that that uh, that book. I still remember reading it in college. I can picture my exact layout of my dorm room, all the clothes on the floor, you know, everything. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, but uh, so in Mark chapter 11, there's a story of Jesus kind of passing by a fig tree. And the, and the Bible says that he's He's hungry, okay? Yeah. And then he says, the Bible says that he sees a fig tree having fig leaves from a distance. Right. So there's a tree off there in the distance. He sees it has fig trees. He's hungry. So he's going up to the tree expecting that he can get some food from it, right? right. He gets closer and he finds out there's no figs on it, just leaves only. Right. Then it seems like Jesus throws a temper tantrum and then he, he literally like curses the tree and the tree withers up from the roots and dies. Right. <laughs> I remember reading that. I'm just like, what? <laughs> this does not seem like the loving, compassionate, patient Jesus. And right. to make things worse, the scripture explicitly says that it's not yet the season for figs, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so that's like me going to Thai food, right? And I want mango sticky rice, which is my favorite dessert. Yeah. But I know that it's not mango season. And so I try to order mango sticky rice and they say, sorry, we don't have it. It's not in season. Then I like start yelling. I tear my shirt and I flip the tables over and I get upset <laughs> and then I burn the building down. It just seems like, whoa, that's, that's a slight overreaction, yeah, right? Yeah. That, that escalated quickly. Well, one thing that she brings out in the book that I was really excited to learn about is that there's something unique about fig trees that are different from every other tree that's out there. Mm -hmm. Most trees, when you think about what comes first, fruit or leaves, mm -hmm. well, obviously, Leaves come first. You're never going to see, uh, you know, an apple tree where it's just apples and no leaves unless right. it's like a practical joke or something like that. But apparently fig leaves are different in that this kind of fig tree has figs first and leaves second. Oh. So when Jesus from a distance could see the leaves, he could logically conclude that there should be figs, right. but there wasn't. So why did Jesus do this? Well, it was a living parable of what the uh, the Israel Israelites were 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 like. You know, the Psalms one talks about how uh, Israel is like a tree planted by rivers of water that brings its fruit in in its season. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, uh, or, or with, with Israel, at least, they had all the advantages. They were God's chosen people. God had committed the oracles to them, and yet they had no spiritual fruit in their life. And so that's why Jesus was upset. And so, I don't know, it was just an insight into the Gospels that I, I had never noticed before. And I remember reading that story, and I was like, man, this book is awesome. Right. So, sorry, that was a long tangent to tell you what author I like. <laughs> no, that's, that's actually, I did not, I've never heard that before. That's awesome about the fig tree. Man, that's really cool. Check it out, Mark. Mark eleven eleven. Yeah. So uh, what was that book, Desire of Ages? The Desire of Ages, yeah. yeah. Is that available on Amazon? Or... It should be available on Amazon. Uh, I believe you could probably also find it on Audible. Okay. I don't know. It was, it was a book that was written a long time ago, so you can actually probably even get it for free online because it's like written over 100 years ago. Okay. So it's like part of the uh, common license or whatever they call it where it's free. Oh, cool. All right, well, if it is available, if I can find it, I'll link it down below so everyone can check that out. Sounds like an awesome book with some good insights. Awesome. Cool. Cool, man. All right, uh, so what exactly, What would you say that living a, a bold life or living out your faith in, like, everyday life, what would that look like to you? Um, I would say that that just looks like being faithful to whatever God has called you in that moment. I think a lot of times people think of of being bold for Jesus, right? Which is a, which is something that I think we should all aspire to, right. you know, uh, compared to or I guess uh, compared against uh, being a coward, right? right? Yeah. Or being ashamed, which is something that Paul talks about being not ashamed of the gospel. Um, but I think a lot of times people think about boldness as, oh, I'm going to stand on the street corner, you know, with a speaker and like yelling at people yeah. or it's, I'm going to go and 
travel across the world and preach to thousands of people in an impoverished nation. And, you know, that might be what God calls you to do, but chances are it's not what he calls you to do today. Right. Um, so if that's what bold means, or if that's the type of thing that bold looks like, then chances are you're not going to be very bold on a day-to-day basis. So what I think being bold looks like is choosing to do what Jesus did, and that's denying yourself and choosing to follow follow what God has called you to do. And sometimes that means you need to do those kind of weird and awkward and, you know, socially unacceptable yeah. things. But other times I think it just means you need to be compassionate to someone. You need to be loving to someone. You need to be, I don't know, like what is the thing that you can do today to be Jesus to someone else? That's what it means to be bold in my opinion. Right. I, I love that explanation. That's that's something I try to share with my students every, every day is that, you know, your your mission doesn't start in a foreign country or when you turn 18 or when you join, you know, big church. It starts today in your school and your team sport. Like, what can you do today? I love that, man. That's awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I saw uh, kind of on the note of uh, the sports thing. I remember seeing this video on Facebook. It was like a professional tennis match. Yeah. The guy served uh, the, the ball to the other guy. And apparently the, the, the referee thought that the ball went out of bounds and awarded the receiving tennis player the point. The guy on the receiving end said to the other guy, he said, hey, you might want to challenge that call because it was in. Yeah, that's awesome. And and, and the guy was like, what? Like, are you serious? He's like, no, watch, challenge the call. So he challenges the call and they play it back and sure enough, the ball was in. In other words, this guy had the integrity to say, no, listen, you got the point, not me. Now, that's not like gospel-centered in the sense that someone's going to come to Jesus because of it, but right. that's living life as how a Christian ought to, with integrity and honesty. And that could be a moment in on a sports field where you could be living a quote-unquote bold life. Right. Oh, yeah, I love that illustration, definitely. Because we have opportunities like that every single day to, to, to live boldly and show who we belong to. So yeah. I like that. Cool, man. All right, as we wrap up, uh, I know you have some big plans for the future. You want to share those with us? Yeah, I, I've got uh, two projects, if you don't mind, that I can I can plug. No, go for it, man. Uh, the first one is a series of videos that I'm actually in the process of releasing right now. It's going to be a, a really challenging and controversial subject. It's on the issue of homosexuality and how that interacts with faith and church and things like that. Um, so I will say at the outset, before I get stoned by anybody who's listening here who doesn't who doesn't know the full context of everything, I, I, I fully affirm the traditional model of marriage. I believe marriage is for a man and a woman under a union blessed by God in a long-term committed relationship, all that kind of stuff. Like, like I believe what you most likely believe on the subject. But the series of videos is interesting because I'm interviewing this guy who doesn't believe what I believe. He is a blogger, like a speaker, podcaster. He's a Christian and he's gay. And he's uh, fully affirming in his beliefs uh, about the LGBT community. And we have a four-part series of, of talks about that. And what does that look like? And how does homophobia play into it? And all, all kinds of different questions around the subject. And the reason why I'm very excited to, to, to showcase this isn't because my channel is intended to be a place for answers necessarily, but more for conversations. The kinds of conversations we need to be having as a church. Because every single person who's listening here, chances are you know someone who's gay or queer or something along those lines. And I'm sure you love them just as much as I love my gay friends as well. And we want to know how do we interact as faithful Christians with these different kinds of people. And so those, that's why that, uh, that series of videos is really important to me. And so I want to encourage people to check that out. But the second part is in 2018, my wife and I have this uh, ambitious project. We're still unsure if it's going to fully manifest itself, but we're trying to do 12 mission trips in 12 months. And we'll, we'll, we'll be attempting to, to vlog that experience and kind of showcasing what does it look like to use your gifts for God? You know, so many people think that, oh, you know, if I can't preach or if I can't, uh, you know, sing or play an instrument, then God can't really use me because those are largely speaking the only skills that a church usually employs or uses. But I'm going to be trying to highlight stories of God working through different types of people all across the world. And so I'm excited about that. I appreciate prayers for this project because it's something that, like I said, is still under development. But uh, in January, I'll be going to Haiti and February, I'll be going to Kenya. And I have a couple more on the list, but uh, we're still working on that. Man, that's that's awesome. Uh, I love missions. Um, and when this goes up, it'll be at the beginning of January, so you may already be in Haiti. I, I don't know. So Awesome. Very cool. Uh, everyone who watches this, be sure to keep Justin and his wife in your prayers to support them in, in this 
thing and this mission. Uh, man, yeah, that's that's so cool. I plan to go back whenever my daughter gets a little bit bigger. Um, awesome. All right, man. So uh, where where can my viewers connect with you? Oh, yeah. Uh, if you want to hang out with me on YouTube, you can do that. Uh, just search for Christian Vloggers or something like that and you should be able to find me. Um, I'm on all the relevant socials, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, Facebook, all that kind of stuff. And I'd love to chat with you guys. If any of you guys have questions about, uh, about the Bible or want to suggest a video, I'm very open to that kind of thing. Or, uh, if you're interested in starting a YouTube channel yourself, I have a course that I've created for people like you. And I'd love to talk to you about that. I'd love to, to help you kind of build something that you believe God's calling you to do. That's awesome. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us for this interview. Keep living a bold life.